Hey guys, King Cade here and welcome back to another video. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to model a simple sword on Blender. Let's get right into this. So I have made this video a few times, but in those videos, I always forgot to add something in there. So I'm just going to redo them. So, so once you're in a Blender, by the way, if you are confused on what buttons I'm clicking at any point in this video, look down here at the bottom right and it shows what buttons I'm clicking. The middle mouse button, left, right, and if I click any keys as well. So what you want to do, just hold down your mouse, select all of these, click X, and then click delete, because we are going to start off new. Click on this little icon right here to go into this preview, click Shift A, and then go down to where it says image, and then add a reference image. So since we are modeling a sword, just go into Google and type in stylized sword, and pick out any sword you want to model. So click reference and then pick out your sword. So this is the sword I'm going to be using in this video. If you want to use the same sword, just go to Google, type in stylized sword. And this is one of the first swords that pops up. And yeah, I think this one is good to start off with because it is pretty simple. We are going to ignore some things on here, but overall it's pretty simple. So first of all, what you want to do, click shift A again and add in a plane like this. So click tab and then click M and merge them at the center. And now make sure you're on vertices select because if you're not on vertices select that you can't see it click a to select everything and now go back into this point of view so now make sure your vertices is selected by clicking a now click G to move your vertices around so this is our little vertices right here this little orange thing and we want to move it towards the bottom of the sword so on this sword it's pretty easy to see this is kind of the middle part right here in the middle and then it gets sharper out here so this is the blade and then there's kind of this middle part and that is what we are outlining so go zoom in like this click e and then just kind of outline it so click e and then click it where you want it to be and just keep moving up click e click e click and then just keep going like this so just click e place the vertice where you want it to be and then just keep clicking e if you don't like where it is like if you place it over here just click Control z to undo it and then click this vertice once again click E and then just keep doing this and what we are doing right now is we are just outlining the blade so yeah so let's just place this right here and we're just outlining the blade right now not the outside of the blade kind of this inner part because this is the part that we want and there we go so once we reach the top there we go so since this sword is symmetrical we're actually gonna mirror it if the sword isn't symmetrical then you'll just follow it down this other side but since it is symmetrical, what we can do is we can go out by clicking tab, click this little wrench, add a mirror modifier. So click on modifier and click add a mirror. And then we want to mirror it on the Y axis. So click this and then click this to get rid of that. And now we have a mirrored part right here. So it may look kind of weird. So what we are going to do is we're going to go into edit mode, click A to select all. And we're just going to kind of move it over a little bit. And then we're going to go out of edit mode and then move the entire thing over until it kind of like feels right so move it a little bit closer and there we go now it's pretty much symmetrical also what we are going to do is we're going to click this little icon right here to turn on clipping that just means that whenever we move things apart it will go ahead and attach them together so yeah so now what we are going to do for this bottom part we are going to click e to extrude it i clicked the wrong button click e and then we are just going to move it over here and there we go so now those ones are attached and now what we are going to do is we're going to go ahead and apply this modifier. So go out of edit mode, click this little drop down arrow and click apply. And there we go. Now it is applied just like this. And now what we are going to do, we're going to go down the entire sword. So we're going to click this vertice and then this one. And then we're just going to click F. So click this vertice, hold down shift, select this one, and then click F. And we're just going to do that down the entire sword. If it's perfectly symmetrical like this, is you can just go like this. You can just highlight it like that and then click F. And yeah, so we are just going to do this down the entire sword though. Also, if you are doing this on a sword that isn't symmetrical, you don't have to worry about attaching every vertice to another one. It doesn't have to be like this, such as if we had an extra vertice right here that kind of goes like this. We don't have to worry about attaching another vertice. It just kind of makes it easier, but if there isn't enough vertices, then we don't have to attach it. But if we want to, we can click Control R to add a loop cut right there. And then we could attach them. You don't need to do this, but you could do that if you want to, if your sword isn't symmetrical. And yeah, now what we are going to do, click this little icon right here to select the edges. And we are just going to select all the edges. And then we are going to click F to fill it in. 
and select all the edges, click F. And if your sword is perfectly symmetrical and each vertice has another one, then you can actually just go like this. You can just select this one, this one, and then click F. And then you can just click F and it will fill in the entire sword just like this by just continuously clicking F. But on this one, we can't do it because see, we have these right here. So this one actually has more vertices. So what we want to do instead of doing this and this, we would actually want to select all of them just so it doesn't mess up. And yeah, now we are going to continue doing this and fill all of that in. And now on this bottom one, we're just going to select all the faces. And there we go. Now click this to select face select. Click A to select everything. Click E to extrude. And we're just going to extrude it this way a little bit. Not too much. We can always change how thick it is later. But that is pretty good. Now what we are going to do is click Control R and add a loop cut down the middle like this. And then click your mouse button. And then right click. There we go. Now go back into this point of view. And what we are going to do is click S and Y to scale it on the Y axis. And then it will move it just like this. So scale it a little bit on the Y axis. It doesn't have to perfectly match the background image. So yeah, now what we are going to do is let's just grab this top vertice by going into vertice select, vertice select. And then move it up a little bit just so we can see it. And now you may be thinking that your sword does look pretty weird. But we're going to fix that in just a second. So now what we are going to do, hold down Z and go into wireframe. So just like this, Z into wireframe. And that just allows you to see through the sword. Now what we are going to do, we're going to select all these vertices so this one right here and we're just going to outline it to the sword so we can click this vertice click g which actually since it's symmetrical we're actually just going to scale it up just so it's perfectly symmetrical and there we go now this one we're going to click sy just to move it on the y axis same with this one right here sy but if it's not perfectly symmetrical then you can just click a vertice click g and then kind of move it around just like that and yeah so let's click this one this one sy and there we go. Now the rest of the sword, we could make some modifications to it if we want to, but I think it actually looks pretty good. If you want to add this little cut, you can click Control R, add a loop cut, and you can always move that downward. And then you can click this, and then you could kind of move it inward. And that kind of adds a small little cut. You can do that, but we're not going to do that for now. And yeah, now the blade is pretty much done. You can add more detail to the blade if you want to, but I think this blade is looking pretty good for a simple tutorial. Now what we are going to do, let's just go back into edit mode and now we are going to do this little bottom part right here. So for this bottom part, we're actually going to do the handle first since the handle does look a little bit simpler. So to click shift A and add in a cylinder and you can change how many vertices you want your cylinders to have by clicking this little icon and vertices you can move it down or upward. If you're trying to make a low poly one, then you can do something small like 8 and I'm actually going to do 10 vertices. If you're going high poly, then you can make it all 32 or even more. So yeah, so click S to scale it down, and then click G to move it down here, and let's just move it in the center, and then you can click S to Z to scale it on the Z axis, just like this. And yeah, so we are going to move it down, scale it down a little bit. We can actually go hold down Z to go back into wireframe, just to see through it. And we're going to click S to Z, and we're just going to scale it to pretty much the exact same length as that. Now we are going to go into face select, select this bottom face. We're going to click Shift D to duplicate it. And then we're going to just click S and then E to extrude it downward, S to scale it up again, then E to extrude it downward just a little bit more, and then E again, and then S just to finish that off. And there we go. Now that is looking pretty good. Now let's also click Shift D to duplicate that face. And let's move it upward and let's do this little top one right here. So let's click S to scale it up, and then E, and then S, and then E again. And there we go. Now our handle is looking pretty good. If we want to add more detail to our handle, what we can actually do is we can click Shift D to duplicate this face. We move it down here. We can scale it just a little bit. And now we could actually rotate it like this. Click E, which whenever we click E, let's click E. And then let's just use this to move it straight down. And then we can click L to select this entire object right there. And now what we could do is we could click Shift D. And then we can click RZ180 to rotate 180 degrees on the Z axis. And we can move it down. And now we could just select both of these. So click L to select both of them. Click Shift D. And then we could just move this downward as well. And let's click L on both of these to select them. And there we go. Now we have a little bit more detailed handle. If you want to learn how to make a fully wrapped handle and make it look really good, I did make a tutorial on that. So if you're planning on increasing your abilities on making swords, you can look at that video on how to make wrapped handles. So yeah, now what we're going to do, we're just going to click L on all of these. 
and we're just gonna move it over just so it's a little bit aligned with the blade that we are making and now what we are gonna do for this handle right here it is a little bit complicated for this video so we're just gonna click shift a and add in a cube and we're just gonna scale it down and let's move it downward and let's try to make sure that's aligned with our blade that we are making there we go now we're gonna hold down z to go into wireframe just so we can easily see through it so we're gonna scale it on the z axis scale it up we're not gonna perfectly make it match that because that's a, a little bit complicated for this video we are gonna click Control r to add a loop cut click it so it adds it in the middle and then right click so it adds it in the center we are gonna click s y to scale it on the y axis and we are gonna also add a loop cut down the middle and there we go now we're gonna select this top face on the part there we go this top edge right there and now what we are gonna do is we are gonna move it upward so let's just move it upward a little bit like that. And now since we also want to add that curve, we can add another loop cut right here and another one right there. And we can select this edge and this edge. And what we could also do to add a little bit more detail, we could go into vertices select, select this vertice and this one right here on this other side. And we could click SY if we want to, no, not SY, SX just like this. And we could add a little bit of a point right there. And we could also do it with these two as well. There we go, hold down shift, S, X, and there we go. Now we have a little bit of a curve. And also, by the way, if you want to make this thinner, what you can do, go into edit mode, go into face select, click L on this right here, and then just click S, X, and you can make it thinner like this if you don't want it to be too thick. So we are going to actually make it thinner, and there we go. And we are also going to select the blade just like this. And let's also move the blade forward to kind of align it a little bit better. And now what we are going to do, is we're gonna add those little side pieces. So once again, for those little side pieces, they're a little bit complicated, so we're not gonna make them look exactly the same. So what we're gonna do, just select this face and this face by holding down Shift, click Shift D to duplicate it, and we are gonna go back into our wireframe view, and we're just gonna extrude it outward, and let's click G to kind of move it upward, and R to rotate just a little bit, and click Control R to add a loop cut in the middle. Let's move it a little bit downward. And now what we could also do is we could select this one right here. And we could kind of scale it downward maybe to make a little bit of a point. We're not going to make it exactly like that, but kind of a little bit like it. So now what we're going to do, let's select this edge right here. Let's move it outward a little bit. And if we want that little claw on the bottom, kind of like how it is in there, what we can do is let's add a loop cut. And now let's just kind of move the loop cut right there. And let's select this bottom face and let's click E to extrude it. Let's click G and R to kind of rotate it. And we could scale it downward just like this. It's not really the best claw. You could probably make it better, but it's all right for now. Let's select this edge and let's move it outward. There we go. And yeah, definitely not the best claw, but it'll do. So let's go ahead and click L. Let's click SX to make that a little bit thinner. And now what we can do is we can click shift d to duplicate it click rz 180 and then just move it over here and there we go we're just going to put down this side and now for the blade we're going to select it and we're just going to move it downward and there we go there is our pretty good looking sword you could always resize some of this stuff such as this blade is kind of big so we could always select it and then we could kind of scale it down and then move it down as well if we think it is too big and that looks a little bit better as long as we were to scale this thing down as well. So let's scale this down and move it down. Let's scale it a little bit on the x-axis. And there we go. There's our pretty good looking sword. And now what you want to do, since we can see all these kind of little faces right there, just select your sword, right click, and then click Shade Smooth. If you're on a later version, you can actually click Shade Auto Smooth. But if you're on like an earlier version and it's kind of outdated, just click Shade Smooth like this. And it will look kind of weird. But just click on this little triangle icon, go down to where it says normals, and click auto smooth. And there we go, it will still look kind of weird, but just drag this down. If it like if it still kind of looks weird like this, just drag it down a little bit. And once we drag it down far enough, and there we go, that is looking pretty good. So there is our brand new sword right there. If you want to learn how to make a more detailed sword, you can check out some of my past videos where I show you how to make a more detailed sword and how to make wrapped handles for your sword as well so it can look pretty good. But yeah, that is a simple tutorial on how to make a sword in Blender though. So that's going to be all for this video. So make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. And I will see you all in the next video.